foundation cracks. Well, we're going to do a little show here on everything you want to know about the cracks in your basement. And I'll try to explain which ones are important, you know, which ones are bad, you know, and there's some cracks that aren't such a big deal. And so we'll talk about all of them, all right? Um, I have a couple presentations here, so maybe we'll just start off with some um, uh, actual uh, pictures that I've done out in the field, okay? So let's uh, move on, all right? So, you know, you go in the basement and, you know, uh, if you see mold, you know, on the wall, it's wet. Well, either you got a problem with, you know, the drain tile system or it could be a crack that's leaking. So you want to try to figure out, you know, if, if there's a crack. Because some cracks, you know, you really you have to fix, okay, because they're just going to get worse. You know, if you got a moisture meter, you could use a moisture meter. Now here, you'll see a little teeny crack. These are vertical cracks. They're, I call them shrinkage cracks. Usually six feet, eight feet, ten feet, twelve feet. They're always patterned on all the walls. You're like, well, if there's cracks, you know what? Don't worry about it. That means the block hydrated and it shrunk. Now sometimes those cracks can leak, and then it's a problem, right? Then you got to go outside and waterproof it and repair the crack from the outside. And we'll get into some of that. Um, so. Uh, here you can see this is reinforced concrete, okay? And uh, reinforced concrete is pretty much the best foundation. You, you rarely see failures with these, but the problem with reinforced concrete is that they gotta pour it wet. So in other words, it's a high slump because they gotta get it into the forms, right? And then they gotta vibrate it. And the problem is is they add a lot of water to the concrete because they want it to form just so you get this nice texture. If it's too hard, Okay, then what happens is it gets honeycombed, it gets crumbly, you gotta fix it. And you know, so they make it wet so it looks real nice, but the problem is the more water in the concrete, the more it shrinks, and boom, there's your shrinkage cracks. Now, they're not structural, but you can see what happens is they crack all the way through the waterproof, remember, on the outside, and now they leak an inside, right? And if this is drywall, then the walls wet, there's mold on the bottom, the carpet's wet, right? So this is a problem because it leaks, okay? Now this leak here, you can see it's coming down, right? This is probably property graded, overflowing gutter, or grading, right? Just go outside and fix it, okay? And this is just another moisture meter. Now, you know, you don't need a moisture meter. Uh, if you want to do it by yourself, you could probably just tape up some, I don't know, plastic, and then the moisture will come through and it'll condensate on the inside of that plastic, and that'll tell you that it's leaking, you know? You know, like so now you got these cracks that leak. That's a problem. So what do you got to do? You caulk them. Now here's the problem. A lot of people, they're not structural, but they leak. And so people caulk them from the inside. Sometimes you get lucky, but other times you don't. Because sometimes it just doesn't work from the inside. Some people they do what's called uh, epoxy caulking. And sometimes it works. Like this one here, they got lucky. Okay? But a lot of times you got to inject, uh, you know, like pressure injection uh, um, caulking. And then you fill in the crack. It's not a structural repair, it's a moisture repair. You know, so this one works. Now here's the holes, you fill the holes. You gotta dig it out on the outside, though. You gotta waterproof the outside, make it sealed on the outside, then you drill the holes and you inject it with, with either like little injector portholes, and you fill it with epoxy. It's called epoxy injection. And then it doesn't leak. Now what happens is people get these leaks in these foundations, right? These concrete foundation and they call a waterproofer and the guy scams them and the whole waterproofing 20 grand 15 grand you know just scams them and <laughs> all you had to do is inject the crack so you better check it out make sure if you got reinforced concrete your basement leaks fix the grading go check your gutters see if the crack is leaking and then inject it injection of cracks is like four hundred dollars man six hundred bucks not ten thousand okay Another thing is good about these, these are reinforced concrete wall. You don't have to do this, but the reason they're strong is a lot of times they have rebar. See the rebar here? There's steel in there. And, uh, and I'm picking it up. I have different types of gauges. I'm using thermal imaging here. And it's cold outside, so you can see the steel that's in the walls. See the steel? You can see that's all in there. See the space? This wall ain't going anywhere. Okay? Now, let's move on. So we went from vertical shrinkage cracks. To now we're going to differential cracks or settling cracks. Now these are usually step cracks. Now look at this one. This is masonry block. 
problem. When you have step cracks in those very blocks, a lot of times it's because the fluid is settling below, okay? And you can see here, and it's also soil pressure. And I'm going to show you uh, some diagrams of this in a minute. You can see that step. And that's going to lead, you know, it's going to cause cracks to wind up and do a, a, a wall stabilization here, okay? And that's going to lead, and the walls can start bowing. And you try to patch it outside, and it cracks again. So you got to fix it. And, you know, these kind of, you know, tar isn't going to work either, okay? Sure, it's a little bit more ductile, but it's not going to work. And sometimes if, if step cracks are vertical cracks and step crack, but there's a chimney here, so it's, it's all forks and that, right? So that's why it cracked up. But this is still differential settlement part. Now, what about this? Th these happen usually in crawl spaces because A, they build a basement, right? And then they fill in the dirt over here. See the dirt is not compacted because they don't compact it. And now you're supposed to compact it right, and get uh, consolidation, but it settles. Sometimes there isn't a footer. Okay, this one here is basically whenever there's a crawl space and you see a crack like this in the crawl space, it's because when they dug the foundation, there's about four feet of dirt that's above above this slab here. It's not compacted, it settles. And there's a footer sitting on it, it's not compacted, boom, it goes down. All right. You can also um, <clears throat> buy these these uh, uh, poles and they, they get pushed down and you can check to see if you got a foot or if it's down below the cross line. Okay, so here's what we're checking it. So when the soil pushes against the wall, because the there's a drain tile here, it's, it's not as thorough. But if there's a tree too close, it plugs it up, right? It doesn't drain, and this gets heavy because the water sits in that bowl and starts pushing the wall, and the wall goes strong enough to handle that very heavy soil, and it uh, cracks the wall. Horizontal cracks, okay? This is from hydrostatic loading from pressure or from frost. And here you can see the horizontal crack, but guess what? It's leaking, right? And not only does it leak here, but the block, this masonry block, it's got holes, and so it goes down the holes, and it leaks at the bottom of the floor, too. So this would be kind of a waterproofing job. So horizontal cracks are problems. I don't they try to tell you if they're less than a quarter inch, don't worry about it. You know what? It doesn't matter. Horizontal crack, and I'll show you how to spot these things. Um, <laughs> It's going to get worse, okay? Unless you like waterproof your house, like people try to hide it with caulking. Here's a guy, he sells the house, he caulks it and paints the wall, and this isn't going to work, okay? And you can see this uh, thermal image here with the cracks here and how the water is traveling through the block, you know, because these blocks are hollow, so the water just goes right into them. Again, same thing, and there's a crack right here. All right, now, here's how you can tell if you got a problem, because a lot of basements are finished, right? So the way you could tell is on the outside, within like a one to two to three feet from each end, if there's a vertical crack, like over here or over here or here, then you know what, the wall is bowed because that's where it cracks after the wall gets pushed, after the wall gets moved, it cracks outside. So that little teeny crack on the outside is a big sign, a tall tail sign. And this is what happens on the inside. When people paint the walls, they caulk it, and then what, a couple months later, it opens up. You can see all these cracks. And then some people put these things in, which is fine. I like these. They're not these little thin things. This is like a channel, and it will bow. And the, bow, the walls will also bow. Here you can see where people try to caulk it and hide it and paint it. Now, sometimes the walls are finished, right? So, and if you see the cracks outside, I just showed you, go in the basement. And this is like a little pegboard. I just busted the pegboard. This is a stack, a sewer stack. And there's a crack. Look at that. There it is, hiding behind the pegboard. That's a problem. That's a problem. You have to fix that crack. You have to stabilize that wall. So you're always looking for these cracks on the outside, usually on the end, but then sometimes behind the gutter, six inches. Okay, there's another one, right? And sometimes they actually have differential because this ain't helping much. This thing's going to leak and actually leak in the basement too. So that's what happens. Okay, and this one here, the gutter is actually causing differential settlement. It's leaking in the block, going down the block, and it's getting soft because it's water. And you have having problems here. And you can see they patched it at least twice. All right? And they patched it. That's, here, remember I said the end? That's what it looks like within like eight inches. When you see that crack on the end, it's not shrinkage, it's soil pressure. Okay? And when you see this on the horizontal, usually at your chest uh, size, I'm going to show you other ones that are over, uh, upper and lower. We'll talk about those. See, they're trying to hide it here. See, they're hiding it. Oh, they're hiding it. And then it opens right back up to where people move because the walls are bowed. You can check out the bow. They swale and they bow. Okay? And sometimes you can find moisture. You, I use uh, uh, straight edges. I'm sorry, leather. 
And what an, another thing you do is you can see how much is bowed. Is it like bowing inward? Is it tipping? Is it rotating? And so you, so you do is you take a string and you nail it to the, the joist above, and then you measure from the from the bottom and the center and the top, and you'll see how much that wall is bowed by knowing this measurement. Okay. So here I'm just using you know I'm using like this this uh, uh, scraper, but uh, I um, you see here look look how much is bowed. <laughs> It was way down here, down at the bottom, right? This whole wall is there. It's moving like a, it's moving. Now these cracks you can see in your house, but guess what? This is fake. <laughs> they painted this crack on the wall to mess with people. Now let's talk about repairs. There's a couple kinds of repairs. These are these, these anchors, and they're okay. Some some got a torque. They have a torque wrench and keep torquing them, and they go out to the yard. You got to dig. You know the only problem with these. Is sometimes that crack just moves down below or up. So sometimes they don't always work, okay? And these don't help. Here's one that didn't work. They had to go put another one in because the crack just moved. Okay, this guy, this people, I don't know what they were doing here, but they had some kind of wall plate that they hid inside. It didn't work because they painted it, patched it, they cracked it, it cracked it, painted it, and caulked it, and it's just not working, man. You got you have to put vertical I beam supports, okay? Now some people will replace the walls. You can see here with the replace. Now this repair is uh, a lot of your waterproofing companies are gluing this stuff to walls. You know it can work 80% of the time, but it doesn't do anything for for tipping and anything for rotation. And I'll show you that. Okay. See out here, there would be cracks, right? They put these things up, they glued it to the wall, and they're good. But then this whole thing could tip, especially if there's like anchor bolts. So you gotta make sure there's anchor bolts on top. And then back here, it could crack down here below. It's an interior waterproofing system. You gotta put that in, waterproof with your thing. What happens? Sometimes it cracks at the bottom after they do that. And so then it can leak down here. That's called shear. So you got a horizontal crack at your chest, and you got one down by your feet, by your ankles. And one by your ankles, that's a tough one. You gotta put a grade beam down there, or, or you gotta you know, put in some vertical column supports. See, there's another one, okay? And this is somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. They uh, they say, well, let's put less weight on the wall. Let's let's lift it up and put it on this column. You know, the wall's still going to move, man. So this is kind of a worthless repair. This is okay, but, you know, they're not doing this right because they think that this board is going to hold the whole wall. You know, they got to have you got to have perpendicular supports here because depending on which way the joists go, right? Here the joists are running parallel to the wall. That's a little bit harder because then you got to bridge it all the way across with these five joists. Now this one here, they just used a channel and it bowed again. It's kind of didn't work, but it was bowing and as it bowed, it cracked and it cracked, it could leak. Now here's a channel here where they nailed it and this is kind of working, but I-beams work better. This is uh, this is actually a railroad tie. I've seen those in basements. Those work great. Those will never bend. <laughs> and I-beams like you have in your center beams, you use those. Those work great too. Now, um, you could, if you don't believe that the, that the wall is uh, moving anymore, then you can put this, you can buy these things, okay? If you want, I'll, I'll leave a link below. Uh, but you can buy these and glue it to the wall, and the wall's are free. And if it moves, then <laughs> you gotta do something. But I don't know, usually if it's a horizontal crack, you have to do something. If it's a step crack and a horizontal crack, you have to do something. If it's a vertical crack, hey, if it leaks, then you gotta do something, right? So I don't know if you need to do all these crack measurements, but you can. Poor grading is gonna cause leakage, right? You should have to fix your grading, you gotta fix your gutters, you gotta maintain all the stable water runoff. This isn't gonna work out, it's gonna flood, it's gonna leak, the wall's gonna, uh, the soil's gonna get heavy. You know, and then this guy's trying to fix the soil here, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna, whenever you dig and make repairs or keep doing waterproofing, you wanna compact the soil properly, okay? Now you go to the house and you see this, like, ooh, what's this? This is fill. Why is there fill here? Yeah, because it's on a hill and they're losing the, the hills eroding. Another thing you want to watch out for, don't buy this house. They're going to build a house right here. Don't buy the last house in the street because that's usually a cut and fill. You either cut it and fill it, you know, compact the soil, or it's a wet area. <laughs> Look at this, there's a, a ravine. A lot of times they move the ravine between the properties with the pipes, you know, but then the soil, you can sell it because they don't compact it. Now this is kind of crazy. You see this crack. Now most of the time when I see this crack and there's a garage wall up here on the other side, I'm not worried about this crack. But sometimes the crack gets bigger. And the reason it gets bigger is because the street is pushing. This is crazy. This whole street 
is, is it doesn't have any expansion joints. And here's the driveway, right? He's pushing his driveway, okay? And it's pushing the garage. And guess what? It cracks the wall. So what they did here is they cut the wall. They cut it, just put an expansion joint in. And that's where they can move. And so, you know, these were uh, some of the slides. Now let's go to my book here. And um, let's talk about uh, some diagrams. And so we talked about a couple things, okay? Um, so this is the first thing we talked about, okay? And you can see here where if you if the soil's pushing against this wall, you get the horizontal crack very bad. It, the wall can bow and it could swale, okay? And usually it happens because there's a drain out here and the tree's too close, it plugs it up, and it doesn't work anymore, so the soil gets really wet and really heavy, and boom, it pushes the wall. So that's that's basically caused by soil pressure, okay? And here's another close-up of that. So you could have different types of wall movements. You could have the, the center crack right at the top. You could have the shear, or you could have the one up top. Now, usually the one up top, there's supposed to be anchor bolts up here, and this can, this can tip and rotate, okay? So you want to look at that. Um, so... Here you could also see where, you know, if 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 uh, <clears throat> if you have frost, okay, and there's poor drainage, sometimes when it freezes 36 inches below, it can cause this to occur, okay. And you could have hydrostatic pressure, and we're not this we don't we're not really talking too much about the hump basement floor. By the way, you got an old house, okay? They didn't have plastic back then, so there's no vapor barrier underneath these old homes, so they always get some moisture got to run a dehumidifier, okay? And you could theoretically knock this whole floor out and your house isn't going anywhere because we're not worried about these footers, okay? The the um, other types of cracks that we talked about were, were uh, vertical cracks, right? These vertical cracks, and we talked about how, so, like this one here is actually, it's actually pushing the wall, but most of the time in masonry blocks, cinder blocks, they're usually like you'll have one here, four feet, eight feet, twelve feet, really small cracks. I'm not worried about those, okay? Because that's shrinkage, but they can leak. Remember, we talked about leakage, and and so that's an issue. Now, here's another thing people do, okay? You know, these walls. This is a reinforced concrete wall, but see the grading is poor, so the water runs towards here. And then people put a dumpster there, man. Don't don't be putting stuff within five feet of your wall, especially trucks, dumpsters, and things like that, because it's not designed to handle that load, this big ass load here. You know, you got to be careful with that. And then here's another one that we talked about these trees. If there's trees within 10 feet of your house, 20 feet, man, I'd be getting rid of them. Now, maybe the tree, now this one's showing you how the tree's pushing the wall, but what it really does is there's a drain tower here, not showing you. It gets plugged up. And when it gets plugged up and it rains, this gets heavy, 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 and boom, it, it pushes the wall. And so you get, so you have a problem, you know, with, uh, uh, with soil pressure, okay. So, a couple more things. Uh, you know, when you're when you're waterproofers waterproofing your house, make sure you're there. You want to see what he puts in there because sometimes they put crap in there. These big boulders, that's a problem. It's got to be good backfill. It's got to be put in it. It's like 12 inch layers, and they got to compact it. And it's got to have good optimal moisture. Otherwise, you're going to have more problems. Okay. So you want to make sure. Now, there's a couple types of repairs we talked about. We talked about, this is called, they call this a buttress. This is a concrete beam. And, you know, you, I never see these because they're, they're kind of a pain to do. I never see these either, okay? But, you know, new houses, maybe they'll put like a black wall. This is what we see here, I-beams, okay? This is what you really want to fix your wall. If it's a horizontal crack, you want to use an I-beam. But you got to make sure a guy knows what he's doing. It, it'll be pinned here at the cement because you'll cut the floor, you know? And then he'll have to he'll have to brace it up top. But these are the best, five six hundred bucks a piece. And you can see how this I beam works. They're the best, you know. And and here they show you those little wall anchors. Remember I told you about those. And and this is how they look. And they're underground. You know, sometimes you have to uh, you have to keep torquing these, right? And keep torquing them, torquing them, torquing them. But the problem is sometimes the crack moves over to here, right? So you have to add another one up here. So I'm not sure that's the best, okay? Um, then the thing we want to worry about we talked about earlier is when we finish you know if you finish the wall with a horizontal crack back in here and you got drywall what's going to happen you're going to get mold 
then you're going to ruin your whole job. So you don't even think about putting up a wall until you fix that crack, until you waterproof that crack. All right? And so I think we've gone over um, um, a couple of uh, the main cracks, okay? So we've talked about shrinkage cracks, the vertical cracks, step cracks caused by soil pressure, uh, also known as differential settlement. And uh, we talked about uh, horizontal cracks caused by by either freezing of the ground, poor overloading, and then of course uh, drain tiles that don't function because they're plugged up, and under design. And we didn't really get into the under design thing because this is more uh, uh, um, a video for, for the homeowner, not so much for an inspector or an engineer. Now engineers are going to want to know how much soil is behind there. You know, the bottom line, the rule of thumb is if you've got more than four to five feet of soil on the outside of the wall, that wall better be reinforced. If it's a concrete wall, it should have rebar in it. If it's a masonry wall, it should have rebar in it. And you know what? They don't do that, right? And there's different types of sizes, 8-inch block, 10-inch block, 12-inch block. So a lot of these 50s and 60s, built in the 50s and 60s, they had 8-inch block and 10-inch block. And the trees were small. Now the trees are growing, you know, they're getting bigger and the roots are getting in there. So, and the grading is getting bad. So a lot of these homes have to be waterproof and a lot of them have to be stabilized. Now, if you've got a house that leaks and you've got cracks, if you waterproof it, guess what? It's going to keep cracking and that waterproofing is going to be wasted because the cracks, the cracks going to get bigger and it's going to break the waterproofing that you just paid to do. So you've got to fix soil pressure type cracks or uh, hydrostatic loading conditions those types of cracks that are moving differential settlement. Sometimes if you find out that footer is bad, you got to dig underneath the footer and, and you have to underpin it, you know? So you've got to fix the cracks before you waterproof. All right. So, hey, thanks for coming on. Uh, hey, um, please like uh, and subscribe. We also have a service uh, called uh, uh, Call Marco with a question. I've been doing this for 33 years. Uh, I've done 18,000 homes. And so we do a lot of out-of-town people have problems with their homes, not just cracks. Other, they might want an opinion on waterproofing or the roof or, or you know, stains or odors. And usually within 15, 20 minutes, we can diagnose your problem, ask you a bunch of questions. Sometimes you send us some pictures, you know, and uh, we can solve your problem. It's not a whole lot of money. Call Mark with a question. If it's local, just give us a call. Um, we do travel a little bit around Ohio, depending on what we're doing. And, uh, of course, we, we are home inspectors, so... You have a nice day. Please subscribe and like.